Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you're dealing with a health challenge, you have a loved one dealing with a health challenge and you need help with, we are here for you at 844-236-6010. We welcome your calls, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, formulations, ingredients, skin health questions, questions about our Truth Skin Health products or comments or success stories that you would like to share. We love hearing success stories on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please head to my website, brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products right off the website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team if you're you're entrepreneur, entrepreneurially minded, if you like the entrepreneur lifestyle, if you want to work out of your home, supplement your income, or if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price for a one-time $25 fee, you can join the Brightside Ben team. Call 866-735-2470 if you'd like to speak to somebody live, or you can head to the websites brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can sign up right off the websites. For a one-time $25 fee, you can be in business, help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. Call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Or sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. We've got blog stories, uh, news stories and blog posts and videos at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com or retinol 5% gel, transdermal C serum, transdermal C balm, and our omega-6 healing cream if you're dealing with dark spots, hyperpigmentation, acne blemishes, or just aging skin, or if you just need a high-quality skin-softening, moisturizing product, you want to know about our Truth Treatment products, they're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side, friends. We're talking about vibration. Everything in life is vibration, vibration that takes the form of waves. Life itself is a vibratory phenomena. Life itself is vibration and waves, but it's complex, incredibly complex and organized and structured vibration, exquisitely, incredibly structured vibration. As you can tell, if you look under a microscope, one of the greatest books ever written was a book called Micrographia by a guy named Robert Hooke, who's the, uh, one of the first microscopists back in the 17th century, and I believe was the 1600s. He started, uh, he, he was a glass worker and he um, developed these magnification glasses that turned into microscopes actually. And he started 
started analyzing things. He put drops of water under the microscope, drops of blood under the microscope. He put uh, a puddle water under the microscope, tears and various bodily fluids under the microscope. And he saw these incredible things, and he actually started to draw them. The name of, uh, he published them in a book called Micrographia, and it blew people away because this was the 1600s. We didn't have any idea in the 1600s that there was this microscopic world, that there was this world of, of structure that was invisible to the naked eye. It, absol- it still blows people away, his detailed drawings of, of fleas and of, uh, of particles that were in drops of blood. If you want to really get a, a good feeling about what the, how, how our reality is structured at this super-duper microscopic level, do a Google image search for electron microscopy images. Electron microscopes can take, uh, can uh, magnify substances tens of thousands of times, 50,000 times, 60,000 times. And you can see some really, really unbelievably structured and finely detailed cells and bacteria and insects and snowflakes. It really gives you this newfound respect for, for the unbelievable structure that is right beneath our noses. And of course, because it's the vibration of a substance that gives it its structure, all structures, be they cells or stars or bacteria or leaves, anything that that is a structure is going to have a unique vibration or if you prefer a unique frequency. This organized vibration, which has structure or form, can be called information. That is what information is. Information is nothing more than organized vibration. If you drop a stone into a lake, it's going to make waves. Those waves are a type of vibration. If you freeze the water, the waves would be locked into the frozen block of ice, and you could read this information, and you could tell about the size of the stone simply by reading the waves in this frozen block of ice. If you have multiple stones, you drop multiple stones into a lake, and it emit the, uh, the dropping of the stones emits waves, and then you freeze that water, you can get all kinds of information about, how many, uh, about the number of stones, about how big the stones were, how far the stones were, uh, were apart from each other. They are literally information. Waves are literally information. Vibration are literally information. They're waves or vibration that is structured, that is in formation. Health, which is the state between life and death, can be reduced or boiled down to to the structure and the organization of vibration. That's what health is. That's what livingness is, whether we're talking collagen or we're talking bones or we're talking skin or we're talking brains or myelin sheaths or the liver or any other system in the body. What we're really talking about is a structure. We're really talking about a form, which means we're really talking about vibrations. When we're sick, our body is vibrating chaotically. It basically needs to be tuned. Healing is about tuning. Our bodies need a tune-up. If we're sick, our bodies need a tune-up. Our bodies need to be restored back to the manufacturer's specifications. That's what a tune-up is. Our vibrations need to be restructured and reorganized back to their original specifications. Sickness is when the body is out of tune. Sickness is when the vibrations of the body are out of tune. Health is when the vibrations are back in tune. And there's four main ways that you can tune the body that you can reorganize the body back to its correct vibration, to its correct coherent vibration. Uh, Coherence is really correct vibration. There's four main ways to give yourself a tune-up. Number one, by stimulating your body correctly, and that is intermittently, periodically in bursts. And by stimulation, I'm talking about some kind of stress. Intermittent stresses, periodic stresses, not over stresses, just the right amount of stresses in bursts. The body loves bursts of stress. Not long-term stress, not low-level stress, but quick bursts of intense stress. That's how you exercise. That's the best way to exercise. Bursts of exercise followed by long rests. Correct stimulation can retune the body. Correct exercise, physical exercise, can retune the body. Correct mental exercise can retune the brain. The second way to retune the body, correct breathing. Correct breathing calms the body down puts the body back into a coherent state. The heart, heart math folks who really study and really the first people that I ever heard about who talked about the coherence and of the vibration in the body talk about something called heart-focused breathing. 
Heart focused breathing is where you place your attention on your chest as you breathe. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'll give you two more ways to uh, retune the body as we talk about vibration, continue talking about vib vibration and health on the bright side. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. On the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages, benfuchsarchives.com and brightsideben.com. You can purchase longevity products from Bright, off of brightsideben.com, also pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or if you prefer, you can call the Brightside Ben team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can be in business. You can also get your products at the wholesale price if you so desire, 866-735. 2470 is the phone number for the Brightside Ben team. You can also sign up off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, got lines open for you at uh, 844 236 If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today or a health challenge you or a loved one is dealing with, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, we especially love hearing success stories on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. So everything in life is vibration. When we're sick, we're out of vibration. It's as simple as that. I remember when I was growing up back in the 1960s and 1970s, people would talk about good vibes and bad vibes. Not airy fairy. It's really true. There are good vibrations and there are bad vibrations. By good vibrations, I'm talking about vibrations that are coherent, that are smooth, that are efficient. When we talk about bad vibrations, we're talking about vibrations that are chaotic. As we've said several times, the difference between coherent vibrations and chaotic vibrations is the difference between a laser and a light bulb. With a laser, you can do all kinds of work. With a light bulb, you can't do much work at all. The difference between a laser and a light bulb is coherency. Laser is coherent light. A light bulb is incoherent light. Coherency is also related to health. Incoherency is also related to sickness. If you want to restore your body back to health, you got to figure out a way to, back, to get back into coherency. There are four main ways to do this. There are four main ways to tune the body, uh, tune a chaotic, uh, chaotically vibrating body back into coherency. Number one, through exercise, bursts of exercise, intermittent exercise, followed by rest. Two, correct breathing. Calming down, the para, uh, calming down the body, activating the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is your parasympathetic rest and digest nerve. It's activated by slow, deep, rhythmic breathing. Heart math, the, the people who, uh, the folks in Boulder Creek, California, who talk about, uh, well, where I first heard about coherency and incoherency, talk about something called heart-focused breathing. Heart-focused breathing is where you place your attention on your chest and the area of your heart, and you imagine that your breath is rhythmically, it's a very important rhythm, is very important to the body. When we talk about rhythmic breathing, we're really talking about coherency. We're really talking about rhythmic vibrations. Incoherency is out of rhythm vibration. So breathing rhythmically is very, very important. You can tell when you're breathing rhythmically because your body will naturally calm down, especially if that rhythm is a nice slow rhythm. So you breathe rhythmically into your chest, moving the breath in and out in a rhythm, in and out of the chest area, the center of your body, the center of your chest where your heart would be. Three, correct thoughts and emotions, calling to mind positive experiences about someone or something, appreciating someone or something, making it go up in value. That's what appreciation is. When we appreciate something, we increase its value. We're valuing something. It could be a friend. It could be a child. It could be a pet, a spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, experience, accomplishment, food, anything that makes you feel good. Anything that makes you feel at ease is, uh, is going to improve coherency. Anything that makes you feel calm is going to improve coherency. Good vibes, good vibration, coherent vibrations. And while this may seem silly, may seem non-scientific and non-medical, it can actually be very, very therapeutic. It's scientifically valid in the sense that it activates neurochemistry of building and repairing. Correct thoughts and emotions turn on dopamine. 
correct thoughts and emotions, turn on oxytocin. If you think this is airy-fairy, it's all biology. It's all biochemistry. It's all neurochemistry. The neurochemistry of healing, the biochemistry of healing. It's a great uh, CD by a guy named Rick Hansen, who is a, a psychotherapist. I think he's in Boulder here. Uh, he's got a great uh, CD called The Neurodharma of Love. He writes about the neuro, uh, neurochemical correlates of good, good, uh, of good emotions, of good feelings. The Neurodharma of Love is about the neurochemistry of love, about the biochemistry of love, about how feeling love, feeling bliss, feeling ecstasy are actually neurochemically, uh, have neurochemical correlates to health. It's not airy-fairy. I know we're taught this is a nutrition show primarily, but it's very important if we're going to be talking about health that we talk about these ideas. Positive, uh, positive feelings mean positive health. Positive feelings and positive thoughts mean positive vibrations. So you've got correct stimulation via exercise. You've got correct breathing techniques. You've got correct thoughts and emotions. And finally, the fourth main way to tune the body, to reorganize chaotic or incoherent vibrations is correct eating and correct nutrition. Nutrition acts like uh, what we call nutrition, vitamins, minerals, what we call micronutrients, act like little energy ferries to facilitate the smooth movement of electrical energy through the body. That's how vitamins work. That's how minerals work. That's how essential fatty acids work. They facilitate electrical energy. They facilitate smooth movement of electrons or electrical energy. They facilitate organized vibration. Nutrients work vibrationally. Breathing works vibrationally. Correct thoughts and emotions work vibrationally. And exercise itself works vibrationally. Movement and vibrations are essentially synonymous with energy. When we talk about energy, controlled energy, what we're really talking about is electricity that can be captured and used for work. When we talk about energy in the body, we're talking about electricity. There's two ways electricity can be generated. You can generate electricity artificially with generators. We do that all the time. And you can generate electricity biologically by the divine force. And ultimately, health and wellness are electrical phenomena, which is to say they are vibrational phenomena. And it is this electrical vibration, it's this electrical energy that is at the root of whether we are healthy or whether we are sick. Read a book called Healing is Voltage by a guy named Dr. Jerry Tennant, T-E-N-A-N-T, Tennant. Healing is voltage. He's absolutely correct. That's the title of his book, and that is really the basic idea that we're talking about here today. Healing is electrical energy. Health is vibration. Healing is voltage. That's the title of his book, and it's very well said. Doctors, by the way, even this may, this may sound airy-fairy, and if you go to your doctor and say, hey, I'm, I got a heart problem because my, va my vibrations are off, he may laugh at you, but the medical model is not oblivious to the use of vibrations. That's what x-rays are. X-ray machines are vibration machines. Laser scalpels, they use, they use laser to cut things out. They use lasers to, uh, uh, to remove cataracts. Laser scalpels, laser light is just vibration. Ultrasound machines, vibration. Pacemakers, vibration. If you're in pain, you may get something called a TENS unit. Vibration. Cardiac ablations, where electricity is used to destroy or ablate the heart in a barbaric procedure, if you ask me. That's just medicalized vibration. There are medical scientists, medical researchers who are working to use vibrations to act like pharmaceuticals. According to Kevin Tracy of the Feinstein Institute for Medical Research, electrical stimulation of nerve cells with implanted devices can actually have drug-like effects. In an article published in the April 2015 edition of Scientific American, Dr. Tracy talks about using the nervous system as a way of activating biochemistry, which will have pharmaceutical-like effects. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at BenFuchsArchives.com and BrightSideBen.com. You can purchase longevity products from, ben, uh, from BrightSideBen.com, PharmacistBen.com, and CriticalHealthNews.com. You can purchase our CBD products as well as our bone broth protein and other uh, digestive enzyme products at BrightSideHealth.com, and you can get our Truth Skin Health products at TruthTreatments.com, TruthTreatments.com, including our award-winning Truth Transdermal C Serum, voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar Magazine. That's TruthTreatments.com. 
www.truthtreatments.com. All right, got lines open for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, the longevity products, the longevity business, our Truth Skin Health products, or if you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in just a moment, so hang on. If you're on hold, and we do have lines open at 844-236-6010. From uh, the journal uh, Public Library of Science Pathogens, antibiotics block our immune system from fighting the bugs. Hmm, how interesting is that? Antibiotics can weaken the immune system and lower defenses when we need to fight off infection. Yes, it's true. If you have an infection, antibiotics will kill the, inf uh, the organisms that are causing the, uh, the infection in the short term. However, in the long term, you'll be in trouble because they will weaken the immune system. Why? Because antibiotics indiscriminately kill off good bacteria as well as bad bacteria. Today, we know that the good bacteria, the so-called microbiome, the universe of bacteria that lives in the intestine, is incredibly important, not just for helping fight the bad bacteria. And by the way, do you know 99.5% of the bacteria in the world are good bacteria? It's just a few thousand of them, many, many thousands, hundreds of thousands of different bacteria, maybe even millions of different bacteria that cause infections and, and cause grief. And uh, when, you take, uh, when you take antibiotics, you end up killing off these wonderful good bacteria that are so important, not just for supporting the immune system, but for literally killing the bad bacteria. The good bacteria in the gut kill off the bad bacteria. The good bacteria in the gut also kill off fungus. Every single day I get letters. And every presentation I do, I get questions about what to do about candida and what to do about fungal infections. Candida and fungal infections are classic signs of messed up gut bacteria. And there's no faster way to mess up your gut bacteria than to take antibiotics. And oh, by the way, if you're drinking water, you're taking antibiotics. If you're drinking milk or eating dairy, you're taking antibiotics. If you're eating fish or you're eating meat, you're probably getting antibiotics, which mean, means all of us are getting some amount of antibiotics, whether we're taking them on, as a prescription or not. What do you do? Well, first of all, get on your nightly essence. The good bacteria are so important, as I say, not just for building the immune system, not just for the digestive system, but also for killing off fungus and bacteria. So make sure you're using your nightly essence. Make sure you're supporting the good bacteria by using fiber every day, apple cider vinegar with all of your meals, digestive enzymes with all of your meals. All of these are great strategies for improving the environment that the bacteria live in, making sure that your liver is functioning appropriately, making sure that you're staying away from problem foods, especially sugar. Sugar will throw off bacteria, uh, bacterial population, the, the population of bacteria in the gut faster than anything or as fast as anything. And by the way, you have bacteria everywhere in your body. You have bacteria, good bacteria in your lungs. You have good bacteria in your tears. You have good bacteria in your eyes. You got good bacteria in your skin. And there's no way you can tell me that using preservatives in your topical skincare product doesn't do a number on the good bacteria on your skin and could very well be related to skin diseases like eczema and psoriasis. And that's one of the main reasons why I never use preservatives in any of my truth treatment formulations. All right. One more here, and then we'll get your calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. I love this one. This is from the journal Nature Genetics, just published yesterday. Diabetes and heart disease linked by genes. Study reveals. Oh, yes. We need a study to tell us this. Apparently, the sites on the genome, the genes known to be associated with diabetes are also associated with higher cardiovascular disease risk. No kidding, because it's the same problem. Heart disease is diabetes. Heart disease is one of the ways messed up blood sugar shows up, and it doesn't ha you don't have to be diagnosed as a diabetic. I don't even like the word diabetes. I like to, I prefer to say that, to use the term dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar. Diabetes is an official pronouncement from a doctor. Dysglycemia is a real fact. Diabetes is just a made up word. Dysglycemia is true biochemistry. So messed up blood sugar and heart disease go hand in hand. If you have any cardiovascular health problems, and we've been talking about heart health issues now for a month or two, and we'll continue talking about it because it is the leading cause of death in this country and around the world. If you have a cardiovascular health problem, and I don't care if it's arrhythmias or fibrillations or hypertension or, or you had a heart attack, it's not cholesterol. It's sugar and insulin. Diabetes is heart disease. Heart disease is diabetes. They're the same thing. 
course, diabetes or dysglycemia, I should say, shows up in many ways. That's what, this is what is known as metabolic syndrome. Even Alzheimer's disease is known to be now as type 3 diabetes, also a sign of messed up blood sugar. And is it any wonder that our blood sugar is messed up? The human organism did not grow up with sugar. Our human body, which is a million years old or more, didn't have a lot of sugar as it was developing. Our ancestors didn't have a lot of sugar. Hence, our biochemistry, we are the descendants of ancestors who did not have a lot of sugar. Our biochemistry is not meant to handle a lot of sugar. Today, the average American is eating 160 pounds of this stuff a year. Half a pound a day, almost. Half a pound of sugar a day in a body that never had sugar until maybe 300 years ago. Is it any wonder that there are all of these health challenges associated with excess amounts of sugar? If you find yourself, if you're a sugar addict and you can't wean yourself off of sugar, there's lots of strategies for you. First of all, after you eat sugar, make sure you're drinking lots of water. And by sugar, I'm not just talking sweets and desserts. I'm talking bread and pasta and potatoes and rice and, and, and cereal. Anything that breaks down into sugar. Drink lots of water after you indulge. That will dilute your blood sugar. Drink lots of water first thing in the morning. Every, anybody who's been diagnosed as a diabetic knows that your blood sugar goes up or is higher first thing in the morning. Drink lots of water first thing in the morning. Make sure that you're uh, using fiber, especially after you indulge in sugar. Grind up flax seeds and do a, a, a flax seed drink. Grind up maybe a teaspoon or a couple teaspoons of flax seeds. Put a little cinnamon. Oh, yeah, and cinnamon is also great for helping stabilize blood sugar. Use some cinnamon and some flax seeds. You can throw a little turmeric in there, which also has some blood sugar stabilizing effects. There's all kinds of ways to stabilize your blood sugar. Beyond tangy tangerine will stabilize your blood sugar. The Sweeties will stabilize your blood sugar. The Osteomag will stabilize your blood sugar. Ultimate Selenium will stabilize your blood sugar. Ultimate Niacin will stabilize your blood sugar. Make sure that you're uh, using the amino acids taurine and arginine to stabilize your blood sugar. Make sure you're using bone broth protein or even just bone soup to stabilize your blood sugar. There's so many different things you can do, so many different strategies you could do to stabilize your blood sugar. And if you're dealing with heart disease, it is, if not the most important, certainly one of the most important health strategies, heart health strategies you can ever employ. All right, eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. Let's go to Florida and welcome Dennis to the bright side. Good morning, Dennis. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing well, Ben. Thank you very much for taking my call. You're having a oh, I hear music. That's the music. I'm sorry, man. Can you hang on? I'm going to put you on. Okay, hang on. We'll get you when we come back. Thanks, Dennis. Do have lines open. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. We're talking to Dennis in Florida. Good morning, Dennis. What's cooking today? Well, Ben, I just want to start by saying um, your show today is just outstanding. Very good information, as usual. Oh, thank it's you. Exceptional, exceptional today. And you were the oh. one that lit the passion for me for finding out more about supplements and health and how to make my life better that way. And I, I appreciate I that. For that. Hey, you don't think it's too it's too out there, airy fairy, hippy dippy? Not, not for me. I was turned on to um, um, visual uh, creative uh, visualization a long time ago, and that led me to nice. meditation and then which is how oh, nice and stay in life so oh hang on no, hang on you I'm, are you a meditator i meditate yes daily Reading, you know following the breath daily absolutely that's daily. awesome that's how'd you get into it um uh, through creative visualization a long time ago and that kind of led me down the path to uh buddhism and then zen buddhism and I then the, the meditative aspect of zen buddhism is just just that's just awesome phenomenal. isn't it i think everybody should try it to some degree uh, what would you say to somebody who's a skeptic Try it. What do you have to lose? Breathing yeah. is simple. You know, I mean, 
it seems simple, but it is uh, well worth the effort. And uh, how you convince someone to try it without being doubtful, I don't know. I don't know about that. I, I, I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for bringing it. You know, it's one thing when I say these things, but when, when listeners corroborate what I'm saying, it's so much more meaningful uh, when a non-healthcare professional like yourself. I assume you're not a healthcare professional. What do you do, Dennis? That's the question I have for you. I've been in, I went kicking and screaming into construction a long time ago and just couldn't find my way out. I'm 52 now, and I've got this. I've been inspired to go into um, massage therapy. I've got a professional nice. that's willing to help me with it and wants to get, you know, will help me get get into it. And I want to do it. And I want to use supplements in conjunction with that longevity product line of products as well to uh, start this new career. I know it's a little bit old in life, and uh, but I'm not no, it's never too late, buddy. It. Never too late. How can I help you? Do you have a question for me? Yeah, I have just. Um, I, I do. I follow your regimen of, uh, as best I can with what I can afford um, with supplements. I'm a total fan of uh, um, tangy tangerine. I take that religiously, and that, I find that very helpful, uh, among other things. But um, I have aches just from my years in construction. I have little aches and pains in my, my hands, and that's okay. the only thing that makes me nervous about getting into this occupation because, of course, there's a lot of hand, hand movement involved. And uh, I was just wondering... Let me give you some ideas. Let me give you some ideas. Okay, get on some get on fats right away, essential fatty acids right away. In fact, uh, do this little do a little experiment. Get your uh, if you're going to use the longevity products, get the ultimate EFA. If not, get a get a, uh, a, a capsule that's got both omega threes and omega sixes in it. I like the ultimate EFA. It's perfectly balanced. You get both your omega threes and omega sixes. But uh, whatever you do, get a, uh, an omega three and omega six blend and take a super high dose of it. Take like nine capsules or twelve capsules all once and see how you digest it or process it. If you get gassy or bloaty or loose stools, that's an indicator that you're not absorbing your fats. Any, anybody out there listening, can you do this? If you want to test how your fat absorption is, do a bunch of EFAs and see how you feel. Now, if you're okay, you don't have any digestive health issues with it. Well, if you do have, if you do feel bloated or uncomfortable, start taking them with enzymes and take them with food, uh, and then take smaller doses and work yourself up. If you don't have any problems with it, stay at nine to twelve capsules a day, and then. Uh, in addition to using your uh, essential fatty acids, get yourself some of those hand grips. You, you know what I'm talking about? Those uh, exercise yeah. grip. Get yourself some of those exercise grips and do them twice a day. Try and get something that's not too easy for your hands and uh, maybe do five or ten in the morning, five or ten at night. And just keep doing it. You'll build up the muscles inside your hands. And when you're done with your workout, do some bone broth protein and do some of the essential fatty acids. Now, there's a lot of other things you could do. You need zinc. You'll need magnesium. You'll need vitamin A. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things you could do. You probably should keep your sugar intake down, but that's a great place for you to start. Uh, 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 to do a little test with your ultimate EFAs or with an essential fatty acid capsule. If you're good and you don't feel uncomfortable, stay at 9 or 12 capsules a day. If you do feel uncomfortable, take them with food and then do your hand grips. And when you're done with your hand grips, do some, uh, some essential fatty acids as well as some protein. And keep in mind, that's not totally comprehensive, but that's a great place for you to start. Um, what about uh, coconut oil? I, I'd like coconut oil is awesome, but it's not, it's not going to lubricate you like an essential fatty acid oil. Coconut oil doesn't have the essential fatty acids. I love coconut oil. It's, very, uh, it's got some really neat things for the heart. It's got a uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful substance called MCT or medium chain triglycerides, which are important for the brain and also for energy. Uh, but it, and it also has some benefits for folks dealing with blood sugar problems. But it's not going to have the lubricating effect that your EFAs will have. All right. If I email you, Ben, would, would you correspond with me if I were to ask? Yeah, you more put your phone number. I won't. If you put your phone number there, I'll call you. It's hard for me to just. I get so many darn emails. Right. It's hard for me to sit down and type type replies to everybody. But if you put your phone number in there, I'll call you. Will do. Thank you for your time, Ben. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dennis. God bless you, man. Thanks for the kind words too. Appreciate it. All right, it's eight four four two three six sixty ten. Our friend, the underwear guy. Good morning, underwear guy. Hey, good morning, Ben. Where, where are you in the world today? In the world, I am in Bakersfield, California, in the San Juan right. Valley. I, I love it. I love it. So you just travel over the way. I, I never, you never call me from the East Coast or from the Eastern part of the country. You're always just in Wyoming and Montana and California. Is that right? I never go to the East Coast. It's just not truck friendly. It's uh, real busy. It's stressful. It's, uh, you know. What, what do you I, deliver? What do you, do you have your own truck? I do. I have my own truck. Uh, I have my own authority. I also broker some things to other people. Uh, today I'm carrying hay, but I carry all kinds of things. Uh, okay. And that's the... one day on the show, I'll I'll tell you about uh, something that's really interesting. It's it's about this uh, ten thousand year clock that they're putting in out in the desert. Ten thousand uh, I... year. Explain. Don't leave us hanging on well, that. Okay. 
go up to Google, put in 10,000-year clock, and you'll pull up uh, a story about this clock that they're putting out in the desert. It's it's funded by people like Steve Bezos of Amazon and and all these super rich guys. They have an organization called Long Now, and I don't ask me exactly why they're putting a 10,000-year clock out there, but believe me, it's all made out of titanium, stainless steel, millions of dollars worth of gearing, and and they're going to bury it into a temperature-controlled mountain. They're literally going to bury it into a mountain, and it's going to tell time and be there as a monument for, uh, well, they hope, 10,000 years. Wow, interesting. The 10,000-year clock. I'm going to definitely look into uh, that. It's interesting, really. And I've been, right. I've, been, I've been hauling the gears for that. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, good deal. So you, you, you can give us the inside information on the 10,000-year clock. I'm looking I'm it up now. To. The next time I go out there, I'm going to get some more pictures and get inside the caves where they're putting it. So, Is it nefarious in any way, or is it just a public service? Uh, you know, it's, it's not, it's not going to be like Disneyland, if that's what you're asking, like people coming out there, driving yeah. out there. Let's, let's go see the clock. Right, you know, right, when right. It, when, it, when it's all said and done, you're going to have to hike out there probably five or ten miles and try to find this clock. And then there is a door there, and you can go in there, and you can go up a spiral staircase. It's about 200 feet tall. This is, you'll have to look it up, and all of the people that all are right. out there on the radio, radio, look it up, because it's really interesting. All right, we only got about a minute here, Underwear Guy, so do you have a question for me? Yes, I was just going to talk about thyroid, hypothyroid. I have a couple right. of people I know that, that have some hypothyroid issues, and I just thought maybe you could. Autoimmunity uh, is the main, the main cause of hypothyroidism is autoimmunity. There's also a relationship between excessive, uh, ele- uh, elevated levels of cortisol and elevated levels of estrogen, both of which are stress hormones. So think digestion and think stress. A uh, couple things right off the bat, probiotics, the ultimate nightly essence, food uh, elimination diet, uh, eliminating problem foods, especially gluten, can be a big problem. Uh, and then also making sure that you're keeping your stress levels down by practicing your deep breathing techniques. You can use things like pregnenolone and progesterone to help, sta- to help stabilize estrogen. Melatonin can also help balance out cortisol. Vitamin E and A can also help balance out cortisol. One thing that will not help you if you're hypothyroid is thyroid hormone. At least it won't help you any significant amount because, or to any significant degree, because thyroid hormone cannot fix a messed up thyroid. It's only there. Thyroid hormone is only its only function is to replace the hormone that is supposed to be coming out of the thyroid. But you can never replace hormones. No matter what you hear from Suzanne Summers or your endocrinologist, you cannot replace hormones. The secretion of hormones is tightly regulated and it's associated with how we live our lives. It's associated with nutrition. It's associated with the thoughts and the fe- thoughts we think and the feelings we have. There's no way to duplicate hormones exogenously through drugs. And I don't care whether we're talking estrogen or whether we're talking uh, uh, thyroid hormones. So you got to work on the gland itself, focus on digestion, stabilize your cortisol, uh, and then also uh, balance out estrogen. If you want to throw one more thing, the second point in the triangle of disease is keeping your blood sugar down as well as your insulin. It's the same thing. The t- uh, thyroid is the third point in the triangle of disease, so it's like any other health challenge. Work on your digestive system, work on your blood sugar system, and calm the body down. Thanks, John. Got to go, buddy. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side, friends. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com, and our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.